Well, good morning. Welcome to this morning's devotion. It's Thursday, the 18th of March, that you'll be receiving this. And uh, I just really want to welcome you. Pray that uh, God's blessing you. Thank you for joining us. And, and just to really encourage you uh, as we go through the devotion, and but in each day in your walk, just keep looking to Jesus and trusting in him and standing upon him. For our devotion today, I want to continue the recent ones I've been doing in the book of Joshua. So if you want to follow the scripture in, in your Bibles, we're in Joshua chapter 4 this morning. And I'm, I'm actually going to read from verse 18 through to the end of the chapter, but we are going to look at the whole chapter, just share a couple of thoughts with you from this chapter together today. So Joshua 4 verse 18 says, And it came to pass when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord had come from the midst of the Jordan and the soles of the priests' feet touched the dry land that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and they camped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, when, you, when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Well, we closed on this verse 18 last, week, last time I spoke. And um, if you remember, we'd, we'd looked at the enormity of the challenge of crossing the River Jordan when it was in full flow and its banks uh, were overflowing because the the river was at its fullest for that time of year and how a whole nation of people were to cross through the Jordan. What looked impossible but as the priests stepped out in faith carrying the Ark of the Covenant God held the waters back and then as the people crossed, the priests stood holding the Ark of the Covenant, symbolic of God's presence, in the midst of the river until everyone had crossed over. And, and that's where we pick up the story this morning. And I read these verses because I, I get so excited with the Word of God when you see God's sovereign control of events that are taking place, the timing of things and and the dependence of the people upon the Lord. And, and in verse 19 here, it, it says that the people came up from the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. Now, if you were to look back into Exodus chapter 12, you'll find in verse 3 there that on the 10th day of the first month, the children of Israel were to choose a lamb that would be slaughtered for Passover. And so immediately we, as we look in Joshua 4 and we see the timing of God bringing the children of Israel through the river Jordan, placing their feet on firm ground in the land that God had promised to them, there's an immediate link to how God brought them out of Egypt at the Passover. On the 14th day of the first month they would celebrate the Passover, they would choose the lamb on the 10th, they would kill the lamb and eat the Passover meal. They would cover the lintels of the door with blood and the blood protected the children of Israel from the angel of death who would come and strike Egypt, causing Pharaoh to release his people. And here at the same time as the children of Israel are coming into the land and probably next time we, we share a devotion together, we will see that for the first time in 39 years since Mount Sinai, one year after the children of Israel came out of Egypt, the children of Israel shared together again the Passover meal, reminding of the wonder of God's deliverance for, of them from Egypt to go into the land. And so 
I just love it when you see how God is timing things. You know, yes, the river was at its fullest. Yes, it would be the, would the, was the most difficult time for to cross. But nothing is hard for our God. And he held back the waters and they brought them across per, in his perfect timing. And we're living in challenging days. And, 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 and so I wanted to share that with you this morning, because, again, just to remind you, that although you might look out at times and think things are bleak and we see all sorts of things going on and all sorts of unrest and uncertainty and difficulty and challenge, our God is sovereign and he's in control. And as we've been reminded from the guys that have been teaching us in, in Revelation and in the studies there, that God is working to his timetable in his, in his perfect will and he wins. And our God is sovereign and wins and we can trust in him. And as that last verse that we read there says that all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty and that you may fear the Lord your God forever. We can trust him absolutely in the great things and in the small things. Just two scriptures linked to it. Ephesians 1.10 says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ both which are in heaven and on earth. In other words, that Paul says God is, is working to a timetable and a plan and at the perfect time in his will, he will gather together all who love Christ in one to be with him for eternity. We're living in those in the dispensation of grace at this moment in time, but there is coming a day in God's perfect timing when all who love him will be taken up to be with him to spend eternity with him god is sovereign over everything that's happening and yet at the same time as matthew ten thirty says that the very hairs of your head are all numbered yes he's sovereign and he's working to a an eternal plan but also today he knows the hairs on your head and he knows exactly what's before you and what is ahead and as you look to him and trust in him he will guide you and he will lead you now, the other thought I want to share with you this morning concerns the, the stones of remembrance. The instruction there we saw in verse 20, Joshua told uh, one of the representatives of each of the 12 tribes to bring a stone out of the River Jordan and to place it on the bank at Gilgal. And verse 9 in the chapter also tells us that also Joshua took 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel and he built um, there a pile of stones to remind the children of Israel right in the midst of the river at the place where the priests stood holding the Ark of the Covenant that it was God who had done the work and here in verse 20 he's placing the, the stones of remembrance on, on the bank of, of the River Jordan, in the land of Canaan, in the city of Gilgal, where they would be based throughout the campaign to take the land and would continue to, to re return there, to remind them of their dependence upon God and of the power of God that has brought them into the land and, set, and delivered them from their wanderings in the wilderness. First God brought them out of Egypt, then he led them through their wanderings in the wilderness because of their lack of faith. But now as they've trusted God, he has brought them into land and established, and he is, will establish them in the land from this point onwards to take the whole land. And th there are two points that I just want to leave with you from the stones. The one in the midst of the River Jordan is, is a picture to us of the cross of Christ. It reminds us of how Jesus went to the cross and laid down his life for us. And he died in our place, how he paid the price for our sins, how he took our sin upon himself and laid down his life on the cross there for you and I, that we might be brought into a living relationship with him and when and, and as Christ died on the cross for us when we put our trust in him so spiritually we died our old nature died we were set free from the power of sin and death because our lives are hidden in Christ and we died there with Christ on the cross to be raised up a new creation 
in him and to walk in newness and fullness of life in him and just a couple of scriptures there one we read yesterday in our daily reading from Galatians chapter 2 uh, says I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me and Colossians 3 verse 3 says for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God and every one of the children of Israel had to had to go down into the river cross the riverbed walk past the priests holding the ark of the covenant and come up into newness of life on the other side everyone from the youngest to the oldest no matter what tribe they were in and what what life they'd lived at that point had to come by that way and we all come to Christ there is only one way to God through Jesus Christ our Saviour and Lord and we come that way to him and so there's that picture of, of us dying to Christ and being raised up in newness of life and, and set free today you are set free from the power of sin there is no reason why you and I need sin today because we have been set free by God from its power and as we put our lives and our trust in Jesus so we can walk in newness of life with him and that's kind of what the second pile of stones of remembrance say to us because the ones in Gilgal were a daily reminder to the children of Israel and and as they saw them they would remember daily all that God had done for them the power of God that had set them free and and the encouragement to us today and the challenge to us today is as we set into this day and into each day that we remind ourselves daily of the provision of Jesus on the cross and the provision of Jesus today in his spirit. Jesus said to us in John 16 verse 7, it's good for you that I go to be, to be with the Father because until I go, the spirit will not come and dwell within you. But in today, if you, as you love Jesus, you are indwelt by the very presence and power of God. God the Holy Spirit dwells in each one of us and his power is, as we submit to God and allow him to live through us will carry us and enable us to walk this day and each day with Jesus. We have the wonderful provision of God for our sins and we have the provision of God for our daily living and we are exhorted to trust in the sovereign God and to walk in him and to look to him and to live in him. So I pray that you'll do that today and I pray that you'll do that each day and as you set up, as you wake in the morning, you'll commit the day to the Lord. You will trust yourselves into his, his hands and fix your eyes upon Jesus that you might walk with him in his power, resting in him to lead you and to keep you. God bless you and have a great day today. Bye.